Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Saul, and I am here to do a read aloud for you today. So I haven't done one since last week, I'm very excited. Um, I told you before, I really, really miss our read aloud times. That was one of my favorite times of day right after lunch. So um, we have another nonfiction read aloud this week, and um, this one is called, What If You Had Animal Teeth? And this book, by Sandra Markle. You may notice that the title is a question. What if you had animal teeth? So the title is actually asking you something. Um, I also noticed that there is an illustration of a boy. This is not a photograph. This is an illustration which may make some of us think that this is fake because this is not how most boys look or most kids look with teeth that large. So you might have first looked at this book and thought, this must be a fiction book. This doesn't look real. Um, but it also has a photograph down in the bottom corner of a real beaver. I'm going to hold that closer so you can check him out. He's pretty cute, right? So um, I think that she did that because this book is showing us what it would be like to have beaver teeth. If you were a beaver, or you had, I should say, you had teeth like a beaver, this is probably what you would look like. You'd have really, really long front teeth like that, which is kind of crazy. So um, as we read this book today, we are going to pay attention to some of the text features in the book. We know those are the things that the author does to help us better understand what they're teaching us, especially in nonfiction. Um, we're going to pay attention to some vocabulary words, and um, we're also going to think about what is the main topic of this book. Now, we talked about this before. We talked about how sometimes you can use the title of the book to help you figure out the main topic. We also learned how you can look for words that repeat. That'll help you figure out the main topic. So right now, if I'm going to stop and think about what I think the main topic is, um, I'm pretty sure this book has something to do with animal teeth and it's asking what if you had them. So I think that means that I'm probably going to be reading about different types of animal teeth. So that is my guess right now. I think the main topic is going to be all about animal teeth. Now, let me think about what I know about animal teeth and activate my schema. I know that animals have all different kinds of teeth. Like, I know that a beaver has big, long front teeth like that, and I know that part of the reason they have them is because it helps them to chew through wood. Beavers build dams in rivers, which is a whole, they cut a whole bunch of pieces of, of wood, and they kind of put them in the water, and it stops the water from flowing in certain areas of the river. So I know they need really sharp teeth because they have to cut through trees. Um, I know that some animals have very small teeth, like different fish have little teeth. I know some animals have really big teeth, like a tiger or a lion has really big teeth in the front. I know that a snake has like fangs. So I have some good ideas about animal teeth. Mostly I know that animal teeth are all different. They're not all the same. It depends on the animal. So let's see what we're gonna find out in this book what if you had animal teeth? What if you had animal teeth? By Sandra Markle and Howard McWilliam. Hold on, I'm just gonna move my seat a little bit. Okay, there we go. So, you've lost your front teeth. Before you know it, new ones will push right into their space. But, what if an animal's teeth grew in instead? Boys and girls, how many of you have already lost a tooth or maybe a few teeth? I know a lot of you have. I remember because I was there and you showed me. Some of you even lost them when we were in school together. So I know a lot of you have lost teeth already. Now, some of you may have already had new ones grow in. But other people, like some of my friends that just lost some teeth last month, your new ones may not have grown in yet, or maybe they didn't grow in all the way. So take a minute for a second and think about what would it be like 
if instead of your regular human teeth growing into those spaces, animal teeth grew in. Oh. Think about this and turn and tell someone who's near you. What kind of animal teeth do you think you would like to have? So if you had different teeth grow in where your lost teeth have fallen out, what kind of animal teeth would you like? Ooh, that's a really good question. Hmm. I'm not sure. That's a hard one. I think maybe I would think it would be really cool if I could have like really sharp teeth because it would be so easy to bite through things, right? To eat and chew. I don't know. I hope that we get to, you get to share with somebody what kind of teeth you would like. And let's continue reading. Beaver. A beaver's front teeth are shaped like chisels and they are very sharp. They're perfect for biting off bark and cutting down trees. Hey, that's what I talked about before. Beavers need those big front teeth to cut down trees. Now, the author used a word in there that I think maybe some of you may not be familiar with. It said they are shaped like chisels. So, um, I know that a chisel is a tool that is used to cut or shape wood. So I think the author is comparing a beaver's teeth to a chisel, to that tool. So I actually have a picture of a chisel here for you to show you. So this is a chisel. And this is a tool, like we, that we said, that is flat and it has a sharp edge and it's used to shape or cut wood or some other kind of um, solid material, okay? That's what it looks like, a chisel. Um, so their teeth are like a chisel. They compared it to that tool. Fact, should I skip this part? No, I hope you said no. A beaver's front teeth have a coating that contains iron. Ooh, I know iron is a type of metal. That makes them super strong and orange. Oh, I don't know if you could see that, but look at the beaver's teeth. A beaver's teeth are actually an orangey color, and that's because they have so much iron in their teeth. That's very interesting. I did not know that. If you had beaver teeth, your front teeth would never stop growing. So you would gnaw all the tough stuff you like day after day for all of your life. Well, that kind of makes sense. Their teeth never stop growing because they chew on things or gnaw, that's another word for chew, um, chew on things all day, every day, beavers. So if their teeth weren't strong and they didn't keep growing, they would eventually just kind of file them down. Like, think about that. Think about if mom and dad ever have to cut your nails. Nails, fingernails, are kind of made out of the same material as our teeth. And if you're, if you didn't cut down your nails, they would grow very, very long. Well, a beaver needs its teeth to grow because it's constantly chewing. So they're always getting rubbed, their teeth, kind of like if you file your nails. Um, so they're always rubbing their teeth on things and eventually they'd have no teeth left. So it's a good thing that beaver's teeth keep growing, okay? So if you had beaver teeth, your teeth would just keep growing. Great white shark. Whoa, look at those teeth. <gasps> Ooh, maybe I'd like to have shark teeth. A great white shark's front teeth are like all its others. Two inches long with an edge like a steak knife. So I know a steak knife is a very sharp knife, knife you could use to cut meat. They're great for biting through super thick things like an elephant seal's skin. So sharks need to have really super sharp teeth because they bite through things that are very tough. Um, one of the things they eat is an elephant seal, it's called, which is a type of seal. And their skin is really, really thick and tough. And if its teeth weren't really super sharp, it wouldn't be able to bite through that. Fact. 
great white sharks get new teeth about every 100 days. Oh my goodness. You know, I think I remembered that when we read the book Shark or Dolphin. Mrs. Saul said I had that schema. I said, I think they grow new teeth. And look, it says it right here. They grow new teeth or they get new teeth about every 100 days. That keeps their bite at its sharpest. I would imagine that when you're biting heavy things or, or thick things, um, sometimes you might break a tooth. So they always have more teeth that come that grow in. If you had great white shark teeth, you'd never have to worry about losing a tooth. There'd always be a new tooth growing behind it, ready to slide into place. And there'd never be a gap in your bite, which means you'd never have a space where you have a missing tooth, like some of you guys do right now. You have a little spot there with no tooth in it. If you were a shark, that wouldn't happen because you would always have new teeth right behind it, ready to take its place. So, and look at how many teeth she has under her pillow. Oh my goodness. So look at what she's doing here. She's thinking about the money she's gonna get leaving all these teeth under her pillow when the tooth fairy comes. Oh my gosh, that's so silly. Wow, if you had shark teeth, you'd probably have the tooth fairy coming all the time to your house. Oh. That would be amazing. A narwhal. Huh. A narwhal. A narwhal's front teeth do something quite strange. The right one stays small. So the one on this side. But the left one on this side grows longer and longer and longer to nearly 10 feet. Boys and girls, that's longer than your mom or your dad or probably your tallest relative. I don't think there's any human being that's 10 feet tall. So it grows up to 10 feet tall. <sighs> Hold on a second. <sighs> oh my goodness, I had no idea. Once it's that big, it has a new name. Instead of a tooth, it's called a tusk. Hmm. I'm having a little connection because that makes me think about an elephant. I know an elephant has tusks, which are really long horns. I kind of thought they were horns. Maybe I'm wrong. That grow out of their mouth there. I guess maybe they are teeth. I don't know. Fact, a narwhal's long front tooth grows right through its upper lip. So it grows right through its lip here. So weird. <clears throat> What would you use your tusk for if you were a narwhal? Would you poke around to find fish or fight off your enemies? Or would you feel your way through the dark parts of the ocean? Even scientists wonder what a narwhal does with its tusk. Oh, that's interesting. So even scientists aren't real sure why the narwhal has that big long tusk or tooth. Um, I think that maybe it helps to protect itself from other animals who maybe want to hurt it because it's kind of like a giant sword. It could poke other animals who are trying to bother it. Um, oh, look at this. This is showing what this person is imagining they would do with a narwhal tooth. They would use their tooth like a fishing pole so they could fish with it. That's kind of silly. Um, I noticed here on this page that the author on each page so far in this book has used the same layout on each page. So there's a heading, there's some information about the animal, there's a fact, and then um, it tells you what it would be like if you had teeth like that animal. Let me see if, they, if the author did that on the other pages. I just noticed that, I think it's repeating. So let's go back here to this one. Oh yes, look. I see a heading, information, a fact, what it would be like for you. A heading, or what the name of the animal is, some information, a fact, and what it would be like for you if you had that animal's teeth. I like that Sandra Markle did this because I think it's really helpful and as a reader, I know what to expect. I know what's happening on the next page. I think I'm gonna see the same thing. So I think when I turn the page, I'm gonna see a heading for a new animal. 
I'm going to read new information and a fact, and then I'm going to hear what it would be like if I had teeth like that. It's kind of nice when an author does that because then it gets you ready and comfortable with what you're reading. Okay, so let's take a look at what's next. An elephant. Oh, I was just talking about that. An elephant's front teeth are called tusks. Hey, I just said that. That's crazy. A male's tusks grow between five and seven inches longer each year of its life. The world record elephant tusk was more than 11 feet long. Wow, that's longer than a narwhal's tusk. So that's the largest one. So most of them grow between um, five and seven inches each year. So they keep growing each year. And that's the longest one. The longest one was 11 feet long. They're great for digging water holes and pulling up tree roots to munch. Huh. So that's what the elephant does with its tusks. So I guess those really are teeth, not horns. Mrs. Saul had that schema confused. Sometimes that happens. Our schema is a little confused. That's called a misconception. It means we thought we understood something, but we realized that what we thought we knew was not correct. So these are actually teeth on elephant. Here's a fact. Elephants are right tusked or left tusked, meaning they use one tusk more than the other. Hey, that's really cool. That's kind of like me and you because I'm right-handed and some of you are right-handed too and some are left-handed. So we always, as humans, usually use one hand or the other to do jobs for us. That's really the main hand. And elephants do the same with their tusk. If you had elephant tusks in your, as your front teeth, they would be super strong too. You could easily lift and move your bed or even the family car. And no one would bully you. Not even tigers. Look at the tiger hiding in the bush over there. So if you had tusks like an elephant, you could actually pick things up and move them around. Wow, that would be pretty helpful. You know, I'm thinking now about what kind of animal teeth I'd like to have. I might be changing my mind. Now, let's stop and think for a minute here. How are elephant tusks like a human's hands? Think about that. Turn and tell somebody that's next to you in your family, in your house. How are an elephant's tusk like tusks, like our hands? How are they similar? Hmm. Well, I think they're similar because we use our hands to lift things and pick things up. And an elephant uses their tusks to do the same thing. It said that they um, pick up tree roots to munch, and they dig with them. I could use my hands to dig too if I wanted. Um, and also, I forgot, I think they're the same too because like us, they're right tusked or left tusked. Like we're right-handed or left-handed. And the author also showed me, or the illustrator showed me, that they can pick things up here, like in this picture. Rattlesnake. A rattlesnake's front teeth are called fangs. They're shaped like hooks and the tips are like needles. They fold up like a pocket knife when the snake closes its mouth and snap forward when it opens wide. So let me imagine that. It says that they fold up like a pocket knife. So if this, these are my teeth and this is my mouth, I think what happens is when the snake opens its mouth, its teeth come out. And when it closes its mouth, its teeth fold in. Hmm. When folded back, a rattlesnake's fangs slide inside fleshy covers. Fleshy, that means like skin. That's part of the skin in its mouth. That way the needle tips don't nick or poke the inside of a snake's mouth. Oh, well, that's a good thing. So apparently when the rattlesnake tucks in his teeth here, his fangs, they go into like these little pockets of skin inside their mouth so that they don't poke inside their mouth. Now, if you had rattlesnake fangs, your front teeth would inject deadly venom. Ooh, venom is like poison. So your teeth would be all you'd need to fight enemies or to catch food to eat. 
So if you had teeth like a rattlesnake, you would have poison in your teeth. Look how it looks like it's dripping out here. Now, um, it said that they would inject, your teeth would inject deadly venom. Now, I remember here on page 12, on this page, that the author said a rattlesnake's fangs are like needles. Now, uh, if I compare the fangs to needles, that might help me figure out what inject means. So I know that I sometimes have to get a needle when I go to the doctor. Sometimes I get a shot and they give me a shot in my arm. One time I had a shot in my leg. So I know when they do that, that inside of the needle is liquid and they're pushing that liquid inside of you, which is a type of medicine. So I think that's what that means here. Inject means to kind of push a liquid in. Now, here is another picture I have for you of the word inject. And you can see the fangs of this snake, okay? And um, again, that means to force a liquid in. That's what the word inject means. Here it is, inject. It means to force a liquid into something, pushing it in. All right, let's keep going. Oh, look at the name of this animal. Naked mole rat. <laughs> Does that mean he doesn't have any clothes on? He's naked? Oh my goodness. Boys and girls, why did they name an animal a naked mole rat? This is crazy. Let's see if we can read and find out. A naked mole rat's front teeth are shaped like shovels and are in front of its lips. Wow, that's really weird. Look at the picture. So here's his lips down here, like his mouth. But his it looks like his teeth are coming out from his nose, like they're on top of his lip. That's very curious. They're perfect for digging the family's tunnels without getting a mouthful of dirt. Oh, well, that makes sense. If you're using your teeth to dig in the dirt, ooh, it would all get in my mouth if I did that. But because his teeth are on the outside of his mouth, he can dig and keep his mouth shut. Well, I guess that's helpful if you're a guy who digs in the dirt. But I don't think these words help me understand why this animal is called a naked mole rat. Let's see if it says anything here. Like beavers, a naked mole rat's front teeth never stop growing. Oh, so they have something in common, something that's the same. Biting hard roots and bulbs wears the teeth down so they don't get too long. So, boys and girls, it says they bite roots and bulbs. Bulbs does not mean like a light bulb. A bulb could also be what you call um, something that is part of a flower. It's kind of like the seed or the beginning of a flower. Right now, there's lots of flowers um, coming up in the spring that grow from bulbs. Tulips, daffodils, those are flowers that grow from a bulb. So mole rats, because they dig under the ground, eat those bulbs. They must like them and roots, which tells me they eat plants. Now, again here, this still did not tell me why this animal is called a naked mole rat. You know, sometimes, boys and girls, the words don't tell you. So I have to try to use something else to help me. So I'm going to try to look closely at the picture here. So take a look at this animal. Here he is. Here he is. Now, if I had to guess as to why I think he's called a naked mole rat, I think I would say, well, it doesn't really look like he has much fur or hair. You know, he's got like a few, these look more like whiskers here on his face. They don't really look like hair. He doesn't look like he has fur. He does kind of look like he's just kind of pink, like our skin, pinkish colored. And he's, he doesn't have any hair. I guess that's maybe why they call it a naked mole rat. That makes sense. If you had naked mole rat front teeth, you could move each tooth separately to the left or to the right. So if I had mole rat teeth, which kind of look like this, right? I could move my teeth this way. Wow, that's pretty interesting. I can't do that with my teeth. That, that would work great, like chopsticks for picking up food bite by bite. Oh, that's why this girl, it looks like she's eating some Chinese noodles here. She is using her teeth 
If she had mole rat teeth, she could use them like chopsticks and she could go whoop and pick up her food like this. <laughs> that would be so crazy. <gasps> Vampire bat. Ooh, creepy. Let's see. A vampire bat's front teeth are triangle shaped. So they're like a triangle. And sharp as razors. Ooh, that's very sharp. They're perfect for scooping out a bit of an animal's skin. Ooh, so they can lap up the blood that flows into the wound. <gasps> oh my goodness. So I always kind of knew that vampire bats do eat blood. Um, I think we actually might have talked about this a little bit in class one day. But they don't usually hurt people. They just sometimes bite an animal to get some of its blood. And it says that it, they, they take out a bit, which means they take out a little bite or a little chunk from the animal's skin so they can lap up the blood. Hmm, I need to think about that word lap. I know that we all have a lap to sit on, right? Like you could probably sit on your mom's lap or your dad's lap. That's our lap. It's like the top of our legs, of our thighs. But I don't think that's what the author meant here. They can lap up the blood. Let me keep thinking. Lap. Will a lap on my legs? Oh, I know that too. If you run in a race, like sometimes you run one lap. But that doesn't make sense either. I'm going to read this again. They're perfect for scooping out a bit of an animal's skin so they can lap up the blood that flows into the wound. Well, I think that it must have something to do with eating or drinking it because that's why they're biting it, so they could get the blood from the animal. I think that that's what that probably means. I, if you were thinking the same thing, you should give yourself a thumbs up because lap does mean to drink by licking. You might see your dog or, or cat do this when they go to their water bowl and they'll use their tongue and they'll lap up the water from their water bowl. Here's a picture for you of a tiger lapping up some water. So that's what that means. So the vampire bat, and it does have a little tongue there, bites the animal and then it can drink or lap up lick the blood from the animal, um, the little cut that it makes. Here's a fact. Baby vampire bats have teeth, but for the first four months, they aren't strong enough to fly and hunt. So they nurse and they eat vampire bat baby food, which is blood their mothers bring up from their stomachs. We talked about that in class too. Some of you thought it was super gross, which it is kind of sounds gross. We talked about it with birds, but they sometimes regurgitate, it's called. That's when they take the mom, um, takes food from her belly, and she kind of coughs it back up and feeds it to her babies. That's what a mama bat does for her babies. So it seems gross to us because we don't do that as humans. But if you were a baby bat, you would think it was delicious. Okay. If you had vampire bat front teeth, you wouldn't have to worry about them chipping. Since, they're, since they lack a hard enamel coat, the edges would wear away easily and always stay sharp. So bat teeth don't have the same kind of um, covering on their teeth like we do. We have what's called enamel on our teeth and that helps keep our teeth strong, but we don't use our teeth as much uh, or need them to be as sharp as a vampire's, vampire bat's teeth. So um, that's how they stay really, really sharp because every time they use them, it's, it's almost like they get are sharpening them every time they use them. And this girl is imagining if she had vampire bat teeth, she could use it to help her wrap a present to cut the wrapping paper. Ooh, a hippopotamus. A hippopotamus's front teeth are long, strong pegs with very sharp edges. They're powerful weapons, so opening Y to show them off helps hippos scare away their enemies and helps the males to win a mate. So when the boy hippos are looking for a girl hippo, that's how they get them to be interested in them. They show them their big teeth 
These don't look like very attractive teeth to me, but to a girl hippo, she thinks they're quite fine. Here's a fact. Because a hippo's teeth don't yellow over time, in the, in the past, they were made into dentures. Oh, so a hippo's teeth, when we, our teeth start as we get older, they start to get more yellow because we eat things and the foods we eat and the things we drink, like coffee, can stain our teeth and turn them a different color. So they're not as white anymore as they used to be. But a hippo's teeth don't turn yellow as they get older. So this is telling us that um, in the past, they used hippo teeth to make dentures. Dentures are fake teeth that um, people can go and get. So if I got older and my teeth fell out or I lost my teeth or something happened to my teeth, um, when I got old, I could get dentures. My grandma used to have dentures and they're kind of like fake teeth that you can put in and they look like real ones. So it says here, some people used to eat with hippo teeth, including the first US president, George Washington. <gasps> he had fake teeth made out of hippo teeth. Oh my goodness, I didn't know that. If you had hippopotamus front teeth, you'd never need to brush. Your upper teeth would grind against your lower ones, keeping them clean and white. Look at she's throwing out her toothbrush. Because if you had hippo teeth, you really wouldn't need to brush your teeth. Although, I wonder if they still have bad breath. Like, I like to brush my teeth because it also makes my breath smell better. I'm not sure about that. But you wouldn't have to worry about them turning yellow ever. Oh, a Bengal tiger. Look at him, he's like roaring so we can get a good look at his teeth. A Bengal tiger's front teeth are a biting six pack. Four sharp pegs edged by twin pointed cones set between its giant dagger-like canines. So they have two little sharp teeth right here and they have some smaller teeth and then these big ones. They're perfect for scraping feathers off birds and meat off of bones. Oh, so that's why they have those special teeth because they need, because of the food they eat, they need certain teeth to help them eat. Fact, a mother tiger uses her front teeth to bite very gently as she picks up and moves her cubs. So that tells me that a tiger can also be gentle with their teeth. They're not just rough and, you know, chewing through things, they can also pick up their babies with their teeth. If you had Bengal tiger front teeth, they'd be strongly anchored in your jaw. You could bite and hold tight while dragging something as heavy as five times your weight. Wow, the boy has a rope in his mouth and he's pulling what looks like, they look like they're at the airport. I see an airplane and they have luggage and it looks like he's pulling this cart with his sister and all of their luggage on it. That's how strong your teeth would be. Now, it said if you had tiger teeth, they'd be strongly anchored in your jaw. Now, I know an anchor is a big, heavy metal object that sailors attach to their boat or ship, and when they want to keep their boat from moving, they put down their anchor. So they take the anchor, which is tied to a rope, and the rope is tied to the boat, and when they throw the anchor into the water, it let goes to the bottom and it keeps the boat from moving. So you may have seen an anchor before. I have a picture of one here. Here's an anchor. And um, it has a rope or a chain tied to it. And usually you see them on a ship. Now, if I know what this anchor means, that's gonna help me try to figure out if it means the same thing as what the author is saying here. So again, it said that if you had Bengal tiger front teeth, they'd be strongly anchored in your jaw. Now, I know your jaw is this, that your teeth are in. You have a bottom jaw and you have a top jaw. And your bottom jaw is really the one that moves, that helps you eat and chew and talk and sing and yell and scream. And um, I think they mean that 
the teeth are anchored into their jaw, I think that probably means that the teeth don't come out easily. Anchored means to hold firmly in place. So when they say that the tiger's teeth are anchored in their jaw, it means they don't come out easily. So even though you might be pulling something heavy or they're you know, eating something and ripping through it, their teeth won't fall out. Not like a shark. A shark loses lots of teeth and it has new ones grow in. But a tiger has to keep those teeth and um, so they're, they're in there really tight so they don't fall out. Crocodile. Mm, I know crocodiles have lots of teeth. Let's see what it says. A crocodile's front teeth are all shaped like cones. So a cone is kind of, again, like a triangle, round like an ice cream cone. They bite well, but come out easily. So not like a tiger that has its teeth anchored. A crocodile's come out easily. And new ones grow in very slowly. So a crocodile's front teeth are always changing and are always different sizes often different sizes. So take a close look at this crocodile here. Do you see how he has like some short teeth and he has some really long teeth? That's because a crocodile's teeth fall out easily and it's always kind of growing new ones in, but they grow very slowly. Fact, crocodiles can't clean their own teeth. They open their mouths for small birds called plovers to pick leftover food out of their teeth. Well, of course animals don't really clean their own teeth, but I didn't know they had somebody help them. Look at this. This crocodile has this little bird sitting in its mouth. I guess it doesn't like to eat those birds, but it lets the, the bird pick out food that's stuck between its teeth. Ew. <laughs> If you had crocodile front teeth, your teeth would stick out when you closed your mouth. When they close their mouth, they have lots of teeth sticking out. So that's how you would probably look. You wouldn't need to open wide when you went to the dentist or, or gave a toothy grin. So when you wanted to smile at somebody with your teeth, you wouldn't even have to open your mouth because your teeth would be sticking out already. Um, okay. Camel. That's next. A young camel's front teeth are long, strong, and have very sharp edges. They're just right for nipping off tough, thorny desert plants. Hmm, nipping, that's an interesting word. So their teeth are just right for nipping. I think I've heard that word before. I think when I have been around like people who have new puppies or kittens, they've said to me, oh, be careful that, you know, the puppy doesn't nip you or he's nipping right now. So I know that that means like little bites, like when a puppy or a kitten kind of bites on your hand or something, it hurts a little, but it's not like they're trying to like bite your finger off. They're just kind of playing. I think that's what that means. Um, so this, I have a picture, is what it looks like nipping, okay? Do you see how that dog, that puppy, is kind of biting the person's finger a little bit? So it's not trying to hurt the person. It's just biting kind of gently, okay? Even human babies nip a little bit because their teeth are all still coming in. And sometimes it hurts them and it feels good to chew. That's why sometimes babies use a teething ring or a teething thing that they can chew on. It feels good on their teeth and on their gums. Okay, so that's what nipping means. Fact, baby camels' front teeth erupt through their gums by the time they're 14 days old. Oh my goodness, so they're only 14 days old and their teeth are already popping out. That doesn't happen to humans. It takes much longer until we start getting teeth. Most babies don't get teeth in their first year um, before they're one, but usually it's around that age. Like you, camels have two sets of teeth. Camels get their adult front teeth when they're about five years old. So just like us, we have two sets of teeth. We have baby teeth and then those fall out and we have our adult teeth. And then that's it, once your adult teeth come in, you're not getting any other teeth, so you have to take care of them. I know Miss T taught you all about taking care of your teeth this year. If you had camel front teeth and ate tough stuff 
eight hours a day, as camels do. By the time you were a grown-up, your front teeth would be no more than stubs. So if you look at her, you can see that she has these really big bottom teeth, but her top teeth are like teeny, teeny, tiny, because they use mostly their top teeth and not the bottom. That's why their mouth kind of looks like this, where the bottom teeth are sticking up, because they really use their front teeth mostly. And they don't grow back like a beaver's keep growing. That's what we talked about. A camel's don't. Animal teeth could be cool for a while, but you don't use your front teeth to cut down trees or scare away enemies. You don't need them to dig tunnels or bite really tough stuff. And you never lift the family car with your teeth, even for fun. So what kind of front teeth are right for you? I think I know. Luckily, you don't have to choose. The teeth that replace those you lost will be people teeth. They'll be what you need to bite apples, carrots, and corn on the cob. Just what you need to help you talk, and best of all, to show off when you smile. So we have the exact perfect kind of teeth that we need as humans. We don't have long fangs. We don't have teeth that never stop growing. We don't have tusks because we don't need that kind of teeth. Those animals need those teeth and that's why they have them. So human teeth, this page is telling us, are just right for us. Hmm. Where do teeth come from? Adult teeth start growing inside your jawbone soon after you're born even while your baby teeth are getting ready to push through your gums. So listen to that. You have adult teeth in your mouth when you're a baby. They're just kind of hiding underneath your other teeth in your gums. Remember the gums are the, the red part or pink part that our teeth are coming out of. Any new growing teeth are called tooth buds. The crown or top of the tooth forms first. Then the roots grow and push the tooth out. When this happens with an adult tooth, it makes the baby's tooth, baby tooth's roots break down. Next, the baby tooth gets loose and falls out. Then the permanent adult tooth moves into its space. That was interesting. Okay. So boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our book today, What If You Had Animal Teeth? And um, I hope that you got to learn a lot. I will see you soon. I love you very much. Adiós.